Good morning, friends. Thank you so much for joining me here this Friday. Democratic lawmakers are demanding that the infrastructure bill be linked to a new budget bill. However, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer plans to introduce different ideas for the Senate. Friends, welcome back to my channel this morning. Here is your Ford Stimulus Check update and daily news report. Please make sure that you are subscribed to my channel and watch until the end of this video to learn how to enter today's Walmart gift card giveaway. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi said that Democrats are rounding the turn on a massive social spending bill as the two warring factions of the party debate how to cut at least a trillion dollars from President Biden's signature economic plan. Nancy Pelosi told reporters during her weekly press conference, we are almost to the stretch. We're rounding the turn. We're making great progress to our goal of securing framework agreement for Build Back Better in a timely fashion. Moderate and progressives have been haggling for weeks over what began as a $3.5 trillion family and climate plan, fighting over which programs to remove entirely and which programs to aggressively pare back. Lawmakers have said they hope to reach a deal by the end of this week, although it's still unclear what the final proposal may look like. It is expected to be significantly smaller than the original one floated by the White House. President Biden reportedly discussed a top-line figure with Democrats this week that would be somewhere between $1.7 trillion and $1.9 trillion. The smaller package includes many of the original plan's proposals, including universal pre-K, substantial investment in green energy, and expanded Medicare benefit. But the details are still subject to change. And this is what the Post reported. Still, it may eliminate or weaken several key programs favored by many progressives, including free community college, less money for affordable public housing, and a child tax credit extension of just one year. Well, um, you know, President Biden reestablished U.S. leadership on day one. And, and uh, as you've heard us say, as you, as you have, have heard us say, when it comes to acting on climate change uh, every day since um, from day one, the president will, will advance uh, his climate agenda using every tool at his disposal and can make significant progress in curbing emissions, growing our economy, and good paying union jobs. And so he could do that without Congress. Um, there was actually a report that came out uh, this week from, Rodem, from the Rod Rhodium Group, an independent research Firm reinforced the fact that the U.S. has multiple pathways to meet President Biden's pledge to reduce emission 50 to 52 percent below the 2005 levels in 20. 2030. So we'll continue to work with our colleagues in Congress on clean electricity performance program. But this, but this independent analysis lays out a path uh, to the president's climate goal without a CEEP in place. And so we'll just continue to do the whole of government approach that we've been doing this past um, nine, ten months. But if he can't get his biggest climate priority passed through Congress, how can he point to the United States being a leader on this issue? because we have had other ways of doing that. We don't need, what we're saying is we don't need, the, we don't need Congress. We can do it without Congress, as I just, as I just laid out. Let me uh, give you some examples of what we've already done. So leading the shift towards electric, electric vehicles, which you've heard us talk about many times, which is bringing together auto, automakers and auto workers, phasing out super pollutants like H HFCs to greatly reduce emissions, uh, make, ma making a cross government investment in clean energy, like like offshore wind and solar, making historic uh, commitments to use every lever at his disposal to advance environmental justice and spur economic opportunity for disadvantaged. For weeks now, Democrats have been trying to reach a deal on their vast spending plan in a way that satisfies both centrist and left-wing lawmakers. With a 50-50 split in the Senate and just three votes to spare in the House, Democrats need to essentially vote in lockstep to ensure the package passes. Democratic leaders have set an October 31st deadline to reach an agreement on the spending plan and a separate $1.2 trillion bipartisan infrastructure deal. Nancy Pelosi did not respond when asked whether she thought lawmakers would meet that self-imposed target date. During her daily press briefing, White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki said, the White House was continuing to make progress towards an agreement. Right now, Democrats have just a few legislative weeks 
to negotiate and pass a spending bill in both chambers, in addition to the infrastructure bill that Biden views as critical to his campaign pledge to work across the aisle. So friends, do you think that Congress will be able to pass a bill on or before October 31st? Please leave your thoughts in the comment section below. A growing number of Senate Democrats have voiced support for reforming existing filibuster rules, if not for all legislation, then at least to protect Americans' voting rights. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer has been far more cautious about stating his preferred course. Chuck Schumer once again called on President Biden to cancel up to $50,000 in federal student loan debt per borrower with a flick of a pen. Chuck Schumer said that the college debt makes it more challenging for young Americans to achieve financial milestones like becoming a homeowner, buying a vehicle, or even starting a family. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer belongs to a group of progressive Democrats, including Senator Elizabeth Warren, who have put pressure on the White House to enact student loan forgiveness measures via executive order per the Higher Education Act. During his campaign for presidency, then-candidate Joe Biden supported forgiving $10,000 worth of federal student loans per borrower. However, his administration has not yet enacted such legislation. Schumer also stated, student debt makes it harder to achieve the American dream. The sacred promise that if you work hard and play by the rules, one day you're going to make it here in America. Secretary of Education Miguel Cardona stated that the Biden administration is still discussing the idea of broad student loan forgiveness. But House Speaker Nancy Pelosi has recently said that President Biden does not have the legal authority to forgive student loans and that student loan cancellation has to be an act of Congress. Friends, the key word for this video is cranberry. If you would like to enter today's Walmart gift card giveaway, please make sure you click and like this video, comment below this keyword, and make sure that you are subscribed to my channel. Thank you so much, friends. Even if Democrats and Republicans were able to come together to enact student loan forgiveness legislation, not all borrowers and types of loans would meet the eligibility requirement. For instance, high-income borrowers may not qualify for student debt relief and federal loan forgiveness legislation would not apply to private student loans. What are your thoughts on federal student loan forgiveness? Please leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you so very much, friends, for joining me here this Friday morning. I greatly appreciate every single one of you who are watching my videos on a daily basis. And if you would like to enter today's Walmart gift card giveaway, please make sure that you click and like this video, comment below the keyword from this video, and make sure that you are subscribed to my channel. Thank you so much, friends, and you have a very, very blessed Friday.